in a world of podcasts. One rises in the night to destroy them all. The Elder God in an ocean of noise. The Cthulhu of the airwaves. This is Spoiler Country. Welcome back to Spoiler Country. That'd be Johnny right over this there. Way. Yeah. What for you? I don't know. I know this. I don't know. <laughs> if I go towards that wall, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I go this way. It's you. So high five. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it, is it like? Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I gotta go on the edge there. Like, right. <laughs> God, that is the whitest thing you could do. Yeah. Hey, welcome back, though. I'm Kenneth Regan, of course. That is Mr. Horsley. Today is super special. It's kind of weird, but we made it five years. Yeah. It's been five years today we released Going In Dry. Going In Dry. <laughs> a uh, test episode that are, I... Are we on? Yeah. A <laughs> test episode that I confidently gave bad information on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But I still, live it down. Did you think we'd make it five years? No, no. Would you? How? I had, you know, for me, I had no clue. I had no I idea. I, I had no expectations. I figured we would do this until we got bored. You yeah. know, and it's been five years now, and it's five years, eight hundred and sixty. Eight hundred and sixty. This is, this is episode eight sixty. Oh wow! I'm fairly. So I'll check real quick while I'm talking. But yeah, you know, it's been. It's been a wild, a wild ride. I know. We started off, you know, it's so funny. We've told the story so many times, but it bears repeating. Yeah, this is episode 800, 860. That's crazy. We put out that first episode, and I think it was the second episode that Casey was like, reached out. On on Instagram, yeah. It's yeah. second or third. Yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, you guys are cool. Da, 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 da. And then, and it was so funny because and then he just kind of like stayed. <laughs> yeah, he was our first fan, and then he was also our first person to come join us. Yeah, that's kind of crazy to think that Casey's been here from the beginning. The first thing Casey did was he went through some episodes. He was he did like timestamps on a couple of episodes. Oh yeah, he was he's like yeah. all of them. You're kind of behind Casey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he's done like four total. So you <laughs> well, you him in to- editing and doing anything like that is not. Casey is a great at interviewing, doing interviews, but anything past that, it's like. Wash my hands of that. Johnny Kimmick can do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God forbid he does the does the heavy lifting. <laughs> <sighs> Sometimes though, doing the interviews can feel like heavy lifting because I mean I don't want to do them. So I like them. Yeah. I don't want to do them though. It's not, yeah. Not my forte. I'll edit, I'll post. That's what I do. <laughs> and and these and these conversations where I show off, I try I try to wear a different a different hat almost every time. Yeah. So, yeah, that's I a just, cool one. Is that I for Pride this- Month? Yeah, so I, I took the kids to Pride Night on Wednesday. Yeah, uh, sorry, on Thursday, and they gave out these hats, and I it's kind of cool. It's like a trucker hat, with the colors on it. The last Although, day of the month is their is, is Pride Night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are the Mariners doing this year? I haven't been keeping up with them at all. They won eight to six when I went. So nice. But they're in like they're in like second to last. Oh, really? Yeah, they have a really young team this year. Like so, this this, this year's not going to do anything. But like, I think the highest batting average on their team is like. 240 something 260 something not very high yeah so they're they're a young team but they did they did really good like it was kind of cool their catcher hit, hit it inside the park home run nice when i was there yeah a three run inside the park home run yeah the dude lined a triple down the first baseline into the corner right yeah and the throw from in the third base bounced up bounced and went over so the key slid into third got up went in and slid home nice yeah that's exciting it was it was it was pretty awesome. Then you see the picture on Twitter of him like sliding into home. He's like slides on his butt. He's like, like, oh my god, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> He's a catcher, you know. And it's like, like Edgar hitting that hitting that double yeah. and Griffey coming home and he's yeah. like, Griffey's got that Griffey has that giant <laughs> smile on his face. He's coming yeah. into home. <laughs> well, like for the most part, catchers don't catchers aren't good hit. Catchers aren't like known for their bats, right? right. Like Johnny Bench, you got Mike Piazza and a couple other catchers who are really good at, at right. that, but mostly catchers aren't known for their bats. Right. They're known for being good in the field. So that's cool. I don't know. It was it was a fun game. It was a good game. Yeah, that is cool. I'm glad you were able to take the kids that you had home. 
Yeah, I took three kids with me, or four yeah. kids. Three kids. Three kids. I have to, re- I have to recount in my head because there's so many of them. But yeah, three <laughs> kids. How, how many kids? Because yeah. Cody's not at home anymore. No, Cody's not at home. And then Sydney one gone. Yeah, four I mean, to go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we'll see how many move out soon, quickly. <laughs> oh, man. So we've been at this for five years now. Still no Kevin Smith. Still no Kevin Smith. Even though he um, promised us. Well past 100 episodes, but yeah. that's okay. I mean, he had a heart attack. He's doing fine. Now, but I mean, I'm just saying during that time, he had a heart attack. Like, literally, we saw him, and like three weeks later, he had a heart attack. Yeah. But Which he made a promise. I have it in writing. I have it in writing. You, you have it in writing. Sorry, yeah. you have it in writing. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. it's right there. It should, it should right be on there. the wall behind you at all times. <laughs> <laughs> it got crinkly though. I don't know yeah. what happened. I found, I actually found my my assigned picture from him from that from that meeting. Um, yeah, the other day going through my office. It's like, oh, you brought cool. a bunch of stuff though. You had, like a bunch of DVDs and everything. Yeah, I had him by item sign my uh, document DVD, Chasing Amy and Clerks and Mallrats, and then I had him sign a couple issues of the Green Hornet comics that I had. Nice. You know, Dogma is not streaming anywhere. Yeah, I know, which is weird. There's a bunch of rights to it. Yeah. There's a, like a fight over rights. Or the so, happens, which is stupid, but whatever. I think it's still available on DVD, though. I mean, if you can find it. <laughs> you should be able to find it on Amazon, right? Probably. If it's not like, I don't know. If things are weird, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. It, it's, I, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm not surprised that we made it. I'm surprised with the amount of people because, you know, we're lucky. We have Renee. We have Melissa, we have Casey, and we had Jeff for a long time. And we just, you know, all these, and then Robert Slavinsky and Deej Penhalo and Jay Yeah, Deej and Colton Payne. And, and it just, it just keeps going. And it's kind of yeah. crazy. If I forgot anybody, I apologize, but it's nuts. We had, we had Sarah for a while when she was doing some great stuff that I, that I loved. Yeah, I wish she would come back. Yeah. Yeah. And Jay, I wish Jay would come back and yeah. do some more writing, you know? And, but it was insane. It was in, just insane how Dude, much I, help. I got to say for a second, when you have your hand up, you, yeah. your face is in full shadow. Nice. Like you're like the mysterious man in shadow. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? So, Better. Yeah, man. I, I Every time I think about where we're at, where we came from, and just the amount of help that we've gotten, and I think about how many other podcasts have started and have are gone. Yeah. In the same I, amount of time, people that we knew that we helped and we and we chatted with, and you know what I mean, and they're just yeah, gone. yeah. I mean, you think about it, like this all this all stemmed from us talking at family events and then going and seeing Kevin Smith live. Yeah, like this all started from that. Yeah, and then us finally sitting down. I think it was like June thirtieth of two thousand and seventeen. We sat down and recorded that episode, and yeah. then oh, no, no, it was July first because we recorded it and released. We released it the next day, or did we release the same day? I don't remember. I don't remember. It's been it's been too long. <laughs> yeah, it, it was either we recorded the night before or we just. I kind of think we just recorded it that night. Then I was like, "Fuck, let's put it up." I was closer to forty than I was fifty at that time. I am forty now. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm almost fifty. Yeah, yeah. So and it's crazy, man. It's just like we started a podcast in July 2017. Went to San Diego Comic Con that. Same month, yeah. With sponsor yeah. tickets. Shout out to Mill Geek Comics for yeah for give, hooking us up on that. We went to Comic Con a couple of years in a row from that, and then uh, we've been to a lot of we've been to a lot of conventions. We've, got, we've been given a lot of passes to conventions for the show. We've been given a lot of books for the show to hand out, and we've handed out a lot of stuff. And we've talked to a lot of amazing people in five years. We've yep done eight hundred and sixty episodes, and I wish I wish we still had an instant instance of our original website oh yeah just so we can show the differences of things that we've done i don't remember what it looked like yeah i don't either oh it was like i don't remember it was like it, it was like white background and it was just like article 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 picture oh, you know okay. what i mean it was yeah, very yeah, yeah. pretty basic yeah really basic and we have we did have we do have a new thing to do at some point but the one we have i still like it and it works and it's functional and but that uh, one that you that you 
the other well, one, the new one that you're thinking about is better. On, is better looking. I just got a nice shirt. To it. Actually, I mean, I might have time to do it here pretty soon because I'm not working. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you need a, a a subpar tech guy, yeah, okay, right, subpar, there. yeah. If you, okay. need, if, you, if you need somebody who has, uh, if you need a, an overpaid white guy, <laughs> right, an, over, an overpaid <laughs> middle aged white guy, right here, right here. That's terrible. <laughs> But what is going on on our website now? I don't even freaking know. We got, I mean, we have so many people who have access to posts on the website. Yeah. Because we have writers all over the place and, uh, you know, various po- podcasts. But, like, we've got D just posting stuff on his his new podcast. We've got Solinsky's posting tons of stuff all over the place still. Yeah. We've got – we actually have articles and stuff coming out still pretty much daily on the website, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, look at it. Show it. I mean, this is kind of crazy. Yeah. Here we got. I don't know who this dork is. That's oh, that's Bobberty. <laughs> that's Bobberty. Bobberty. Yeah, I call him Bobberty. <laughs> Bobberty. That, that's Robert Slavinsky talking about Miss Marvel. Although yeah. I don't know. Is he, is he a fan of Robert, the show? I, well, I'm just. I don't know. But Robert, if you're listening, you didn't put the Miss Marvel graphic in your graphics. So nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. You just said episode episode three of what? <laughs> Graphic design 101. Make sure people know what the hell you're talking about. So <laughs> three of what? Look yeah. at this guy. And then he's got the... <laughs> is it worth it? Yeah. Is it worth it? Is what worth it? Oh, yeah. this? I don't know. Is it? I, is I, it I, bridging, I, I, like I, Bridging the geekdom here. Look at that. Here's Spoiler Country, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. That's a fun episode. Yeah. And then Melissa talking with Lisa Edmonds. Yep. Yep. Here's Drew Zucker. Yeah. And Phil Sevy, the dude that Phil is a, an amazing writer. And then Some good yeah, stuff here. Funny yeah. book forensics. Is, you know, there's a lot of stuff on yeah. this website. And it's it's crazy to think five years ago, this was nothing. It was just us, you and me, just doing whatever us. we could. Now there's there, there there's a ton of podcasts to check yeah, out. Podcasts at the top. Yeah, there's all those shows. Oh. You're getting caught an ad. Stupid ad. <laughs> Which we don't even make any money from. I would get like yeah, a couple bucks here and there. Yeah, but we don't do anything with it. It goes back to pay for the site every now and then. So look at this. Spoiler Country, Hard Agree, Bridging the Geekdoms, Funny Book Forensics, Haphazard Adventures, Misery Point Radio, Narrative Gunslingers, Nerds from the Crypt, Polygon Warriors, Shooting the Sith, a Star Wars podcast, which he should be doing more of. <laughs> I agree. Robert. More of that, Robert. Bob, more Shooting bad. the Sith. Baberty. Nerdtocalypse, which is now defunct, right? I think Nerdtocalypse is over. And it's, a, it's a new show, which I don't have on that drop down, which I should. Yeah. And I apologize because it's been going for a while now and it's pretty good. And I just haven't done it yet. It was, what's the new show called? Um, I'm finding the name of it real quick. <laughs> and oh, then A Cup of Cheer, which was oh, what, what came up. What came up. That's a great yeah. name. Which is a good, and it's a really, and Deej does a really good job on that show too. It's a, it's a fantastic show. Nice. And then, and then a it, cheer is, is a holiday show. Yeah. It's a I'm holiday show, but he, yep. he didn't, he did it last year, but not this year. Right. Yeah. I think he got, he had overrun with other stuff and it didn't happen this year, but I think it's going to happen later this later in 2022 though. Nice. So we got commentary tracks. We got, which we haven't done it. We haven't done a commentary track in a while. We should do one. No commentary tracks. So if you're a fan of DVD commentaries or director commentaries, which they're out there, we have commentary track with Kent for Canto with David Boer and Drew Zucker. Canto is a great book. If you're a fan of like The Wizard of Oz or maybe yep. Alice in Wonderland or anything like that, it's very much in that vein. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. It's and good the, stuff. The country tracks we sit down with the creators and kind of, and talk to them about the uh, go page by page through their book. Yep. It's uh, Kevin Joseph, always yep. a fan of the show, always a, a friend of the show. I did that one with him, and uh, it's the only commentary track I've done by myself with, Ke- with our friend Kevin Joseph. And uh, we ended up doing another episode right after that talking about Game of Thrones. That's which awesome. Which, which I haven't watched. So it was kind of a fun Game of Thrones episode with him, who's a huge fan of it, and me, who has yeah. not seen more than like four episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I did Canto just with David and, and Drew. That was fun. I yeah. also did the amazing Stephen Frank on Silver and he picked the book he wanted that's his favorite one of his of his yeah. silver series it's this one and we had to cut we had to cut it in two episodes you guys talked like three hours yeah <laughs> but it was so good and he gave so many secrets and talked about the book in such 
depth and detail. If you don't know, Stefan Frank is probably one of our favorite, favorite people. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the animation supervisor on the Iron Giant. Yep. And he also did the What If for Disney Plus. And, up, and just a ton of stuff, man. And he's it's just a ton of stuff. He's a fantastic storyteller. Yeah, yeah he's a fantastic storyteller. His art is is just crazy good. And it's, yeah, he on that silver book, he does everything. Yeah. The writing, the illustrating, the covers, all of it. It's all him. Yeah, it's amazing. We And then we, yeah, that was one and two. We have some other ones, but we didn't put them out, right? We put them out and then we took them down for, for, for reasons that I don't know. For reasons. Here. Yeah. They're, they're, they're different reasons. And, you know, we have, and on this website, there's reviews for books and comic books and apparently music and video games. And there's a couple of those. Yeah. Cool. Huh? Well, there's, there's, there's a couple of music and video game reviews on there. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Because we just, you know, the good, the bad, the not so bad. Can it get better? <laughs> <laughs> that's got Colton all over it. Yeah, that's I think I think that's actually Robert talking about the Halo TV show. But, oh, is it really? Yeah. Why is it under video games? Because Halo's Halo's a video game. Is it this do we actually have a store? I forget. Uh, do, does our store link still work? I always forget. Let's, let's check it out. Uh, that, that goes out to our T public site. Yeah. Yep. So here you can get some awesome merch. Yep. For not only our, our flagship show, Spoiler Country, but also KF, KFMP, Music Point Radio, ran by our fantastic cohort, Mike Mr. Peacock. Michael Peacock. Yeah. Yeah. He, he talks to some, he, he's, Michael's really into hardcore music. He's really into metal. Yeah. Yeah. Like serious metal. We're not talking Black Sabbath metal. We're talking like, <laughs> I'm talking metal from like from like from Norway or from Finland, yeah, and- but he has a ton of people on that he goes and he talks to, not just from there, but um, you know from here too, and just well, he, 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 he talks to like you know folk singers and country singers and yeah, rock singers. He talks to a lot. It's not just singers, but musicians, you know, yep. all over the place. Here you can really show your support if you if you're so inclined, though. Uh, everything's, Polygon everything's, Warriors, huh? Everything's on, everything's on sale right now. Yeah, everything's on sale right now. Polygon Warriors, some shooting the Sith, bridging those geekdoms. Yep. And spoilerverse. <laughs> and of course, spoilerverse, you know, show some love for the whole network. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we need a, a, a like another logo up here for us. Yeah, we'd update. We need to update. This is an update in about a year. So yeah. But it's kind of cool. It's just a T public site. So it's not like we're making a ton of money on these. No, all the money goes back into paying for the website and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we're not. Even when people buy, though, it's like a cup. It's like a buck, right? Yeah, I think when the, a T-shirt we get like a dollar fifty or two dollars from. So yeah, it's not so it's lot. not like we're breaking the bank doing this. It's yeah. just it's just from Key Public. Yeah, but they got some cool stuff: T-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, crew neck, long sleeves. You know, the only thing they're missing on here, which drives me nuts, is hats. Why don't they have hats? Right, I want a hat. I want a hat. I don't want any of this stuff. I don't care about. I don't want a second. With what, Jacob? I need help with Tegan and Jack. They won't get out. Deal with it, Jake. I'm busy. <laughs> Siblings, man. Siblings. Siblings. Tegan uh, and Jack won't get out of my room. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's eight. Yeah. <laughs> you, Jack you, can, eight. you can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff on here, man. The, the, the website is actually really cool. If you like some cool reviews, look at Mariah McCourt. Yeah, Ashton, uh, Ashton Thorne's a really good book, too. Yeah. I mean, here's me and Chris Condon with that Texas Blood, which was an amazing book. Have you read that? No, I have not. I have not read oh, that. You can re- you can check it out. So I hadn't read it yet, and he was coming on, and I checked it out from the King County Library. Nice. Yeah. And I told him that. And he was so excited because he was like, my book's in the library. And he didn't send it to him. They ordered it themselves. That's awesome. That's a good feeling. Yeah. You know, Julie Murphy, Scott yep. Byron Wilson. I mean, look at some of these people, man. If you're a comic book fan. And look at those cool, clean graphics, man. <laughs> and you want to learn. It's like Alana Smith, one of the Marvel editors. Renee talked yep. with her. There's a ton on here, man. Yeah. A ton. And it just, you know, we keep improving it. We keep putting new content out on it. You know, maybe make it a homepage or maybe make it a, a bookmark that you like to go to from time to time. I think you guys would 
probably enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, might as well. Yeah, oh, man. So here's that song, yeah. Glenn, Glenn Dale. Yeah, that's a good book. Dude, expensive book. It's so expensive, but it looks so cool. Yeah, that's a cool cover too. Yeah, it is. All right. So what are you gonna say? I was gonna, say, you know, I was gonna ask you a question. What do you what do you see us doing in the next five years? Like, do you see us still being here? More video. Yeah, I see more video. Yeah. I see better video production. Right. Yeah. I see small skits of production. Yeah. Or small skits. Not nothing, not like Saturday Night Live or anything. I mean, we'll we'll probably think it's funny. Yeah. You know, I see it looks uh, for us. <laughs> yeah. We have commercials that we're gonna do that we're gonna put out specifically for this podcast. Yeah. So I see that. I see more comic books getting made and produced through us that we, you know, we have one that's out, you know, we just got to get better distribution. This is true. And then we have another one that's being worked on, which is in the other, the, the other room. So it's, I, I see that that's, yeah. that's what I see. And, and hopefully we can build out more of the YouTube presence and I have a hard time with the social media presence of like Instagram and Twitter because I just, I do too. I, I just, I, I, yeah. I just don't want to do it. Like I don't, yeah. I don't I find just it wanna, fun. Yeah. I just want to focus on making the content, mm -hmm. making it look cool and putting it out there. And I don't want to have to deal with like making posts on social media about it, yeah. Twitter and Instagram. I don't want to do that. So I know, I know, I know it's I, important. I know it's I important. Think, right. I think what it is, is I never understand. That. Yeah, well, it's like <laughs> it's like I don't want to see because I'm old. It's not about my age because yeah. I have always been in, steeped in technology. Yeah, using new systems. You know what I mean. I was excited for social media when it came out. You know what I mean. I was excited. I was. I get excited for that stuff. I just find it boring. Yeah, I find it, I find it boring in a promotional aspect. Right. Yeah, I yeah, don't want I to do it to push the, your the, the worth of it. Yeah, me too. But I just I don't know. I just I keep looking at you on screen. Yeah, so that probably looks weird. <laughs> well, I wish I, I, I wish we had somebody who would just do it for us. To be honest. Yeah. Well, but that the thing is, 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 is I think show. I think to grow it organically, people like the. I, I think people like it when it's coming from the people, you know, yeah, exactly. from the person that's actually doing it. I think it makes a difference, but at the same time, it's like. I just don't have time. I just, this isn't me. And then I, you know, it's one of the reasons that we stopped. Uh, well, we haven't stopped doing interviews. It's one of the reasons that we're slowing down on some of the interviews because there's no reciprocation of what you're doing. Yeah. And it takes, it's a lot of time and effort. Rep us up. I can't say the word right now. No give back. <laughs> <laughs> no give back. <laughs> or very little, at least. Some some creators are great about it, but most. Reciprocity? No. Most, most people don't. Reciprocity? I don't know. Reciprocation. Yeah, it's reciprocation, but there's. I, I, I have to now. I have to. You're usually so good with words. You get that five dollar tongue. I think it's just for. Rep. I can't talk all of a sudden. I'm like. Bleh, bleh. Reciprocity. 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 There we go. Reciprocity. That's what I was trying to say. We're not getting the re reciprocity that we that we should. Yeah. Right. And I get it because sometimes we've talked to some people that are pretty, pretty well known and they just, I, I think they just don't think about it. Yeah. But those, but most of those people have handlers that should be thinking of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's like, man, I just put my time and effort out, not only talking to you. And sometimes, I mean, let's be honest, you can't like everything from everybody that comes on. No. You know, and, and, and Peter realize an hour long interview yeah. actually takes at least eight to 10 hours to, to finalize. Yeah. Yeah. You've got, you've, well, got prep time, you've got the interview time, you've got editing, you've got everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, you got to research. Yeah. You, you know, hopefully you're not just coming on and doing whatever. And when that, I mean, I've done that a few times, but yeah, but when that reciprocity isn't happening, it's, it's hard. It's hard to put put aside an entire an entire work day of work. Yeah, and it's not just like one person doing all like if it's like you doing an interview, it's like you you handle the research and the actual interview, which is a couple hours. Yeah, and then I'll I then I do all like the editing and the posting and stuff, which is a couple of hours. Yep, but it's like a full work day of work done with no that we're not getting paid for. Back. 
no, there's yeah, no pay for here for that, <laughs> which is fine. It would be well, no, yeah, we don't do it for the pay, but the yeah. point is, but my, but you understand the the point of what I'm saying yeah. is, you know, we go to work every day. We have a job on top of that. Have kids and a family and yeah, kids, hobbies. family, everything on top of that. And then when, when some people don't even take the time to say, Hey, I just did this amazing interview with these guys at spoiler country. You guys should check it out. And they have 2 million, 3 million followers. That yeah. really sucks. Yeah. Even if they have 10,000 followers or, yeah. two th- or two followers, whatever. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like we get, we put the effort into to make a good episode with you. Put a little bit of effort into like t- to tell your fans you did. This I mean, it's us. nothing. You're talking yeah. a tweet. Yeah. An Instagram post. <laughs> <sighs> That's okay. And I, I, I just want to do some different things and, and yeah. have, and I and I can see us doing some different types of shows, a lot more screen shares, I guess yeah. is the way to put it, because we've had a lot of fun going over eBay, going over Well, those haven't uh, come out yet, so I don't know about those yet. Yeah, but they'll they'll be out, you know. Yeah. And it, it, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. So I can Perfect. see that in five years. What about you? What do you think you're gonna see in five years? That was a long ass answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's you talking, so. <laughs> what do I see happening in five years? Yeah. yeah. Uh, kind of a lot of what you said. I see us getting into more video. I see us getting into more more short form and long form content. Yeah. I see us producing more. I see us actually producing some fictional content, like some storytelling content too. Because me being a creative person, a writer, an artist, and you also being a creative person, I can see it's a natural flow for how things are going to go. I see our interviews going down, but not away. I see our interviews going to be who we want to talk to versus talking to everybody. And yeah. that, when I say we, I mean, that includes Melissa and Renee and Casey, them talking to who they want to talk to and yeah. those coming out. And, and I see most of our interviews being done by those three, which is great. And then I honestly don't see you and me doing a lot of interviews to, right. to be frank. I don't see me doing hardly any interviews in the next five <laughs> years. To be, to I like be. doing the interviews. I don't mind them. I just don't like the expectation that I know and love their work. And when yeah, you well, interview somebody, yeah. right? When there's when there's an interview with somebody, there's an expectation that you know who they are, you know everything about them, yeah. you know the project they're working on, and you love everything they've done. And I just don't like the fakeness of that. No. And and it's not always fake; it's really not. And when I've been in interviews, and I, when I say something to, to somebody I've been on an interview, I, I I do mean what I say all the time. If I don't really like someone's work, I won't say it to them. I'll, I'll find another way to talk to them. Right. But I don't like the expectation that I should know about them because my approach to interviews has always been and it works sometimes most of the time and sometimes the backfires is let's learn about you on this podcast which works with small creators it does not work with a big creator or a big a big person right if, I, if we brought on say i don't know if we were on grant gustin right and talked to him and our approach was let's learn about you and we, we don't we don't know anything about him that's not going to work he's not it's not going to work for someone of his level right or it, it may but more than likely it's not when it's somebody who's like you know, it depends Kevin on what Joseph. you're talking about learning about. Yeah. Like, and honestly, if I'm doing interview, I don't really give a shit about, if I was Greg, I said, I don't really care about how the flash is on set. Right. I want to know more about him and like his inspirations and all the stuff that he doesn't talk about. Right. That's got, and, and that, that doesn't always work in interview. And also, I also don't want to put the effort into that. I want to put the effort into having conversations about stuff I want to talk about, you know? Right. Right. Not, well, not if that we I had wanna, one not that person's... I want to talk to Grant Gustin. I would love to talk to Grant Gustin, but I'm just saying. <laughs> If we had one person's way, I'd be the only one doing the interviews. <laughs> yeah, your way. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah, your way. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, no. Well, I like doing the interviews. I don't have the time to talk to the amount of people that we were talking to. Yeah. No, it, it was too much. It was the, it was too much in that time frame. We, I mean, we made a lot of headway. We had a lot of talk, talk to a lot of great people. Yeah. I wouldn't change it really if I could, but it was just, it was too much work. Like, I don't think people realize that I was working a full-time job with all my other family duties. And I was you're working a full, you were working. That, it, it became a full-time yeah. job. I was, was editing it was four to six hours a day. To something that you did as a hobby to have fun with. Yeah. Full country was me. It was, it was anywhere from two to six hours a day of work for me at that yeah, time. That's lame. Including weekends. Yeah. That's not so good. It was too much. I mean, because we were dropping an episode a day, which was fun to say we did an episode a day, but it's like, this is too much work. Yeah, yeah, and it's and I was at the time because at the time you were too busy to edit, so I was doing mm-hmm. all the video editing, all the audio editing, all the posting on the website, all the uploading, everything, and it was a lot of work. And I'm not going to say names, but it's not you. But some people, it felt like some people just didn't understand or appreciate the amount of work and effort went into that. Mm-hmm. 
and I got burnt out. Like you said, I would, and you were right. And I knew you were right when you said it, I was, <laughs> but I was hoping it would like, it wouldn't stay at the, like, it wouldn't stay up here the entire time. It would you know come back down to a manageable right. level and it just never did until we made big changes. No, it had to make big changes because it was at a point where if you didn't just let something fail, yeah, it was, you know what I mean? It's, it's like a, it's like a project at work and you keep yeah. telling the higher man, the upper management, you know, we need another 40 days. Yeah. And they're like, well, you have 11, you have to get it done. You have to get it done 11 and you scrape and you, and you cry and you figure out a way and you bend over back and you break your back and you get it done in 11 days. And then their, their reaction is, Oh, great. So now you can do that in 11 days all the time. Yeah. Cause you don't want to fail. Yeah. It's not a good job. It's, Oh, we now, we now know we can force you to do more work in less time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 bad. That's why I was I was screaming it. I was like, you can't keep this up. You have to stop. And you're like, well, if I don't do it, no one else will do it. Well, then then nobody does it. Yeah, and it doesn't go out. That's just just the nature of the beast. Yeah, <laughs> which is what happened. Which is why we found an interview with Tom King from last year. We haven't released. I can't believe <laughs> we have an interview with Tom King, one of the head writers at DC. Yeah, I mean, who's a bigger writer at DC? We said Tom, Michael Scott, Bendis, Scott Snyder, Mike Bendis. But they're all three of those guys are on the same level. Yeah, when yeah, it comes yeah. to the impact and 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 what they do at DC. Yeah, and here we are, interview with Tom King, and I had a wonderful time with them. It was a great interview. <laughs> so we're gonna put it out. With apologies it's, to Mr. King. It's going to come out. What we should do is we should cut an intro for that one and be like, yeah. hey, guys, this happened last year. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we found, I, I actually found three or three or four interviews that have been done, that were done in the last 12 months that haven't been released. Wow. That are, that are at least eight months old. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and, just because we had so much content coming in. Yeah. And, and it's much. not, we're not disorganized. No, it, we're it, super organized. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. I mean, but in when you only time. have one or two people, because yeah. it's either me or you, and you were doing the bulk of the editing, and then I would try to come in and, and do, do them as well, nowhere near what you were doing. But, man, when it's just two people that even begin to look at it, yeah, things get slipped through. Yeah, but, I mean, it's all good where I – I like where we're at now. I like what we're doing. I mean, this last this yeah. last week we've recorded a bunch of fun stuff. Yeah, coming out soon. Yeah, and we had fun. The first episode of what I think the, is it the first one of what we've done is coming out on Monday. Let's see, is that the eBay one? Uh, I saw that we did Roe v. Wade, which we released right away, which yeah. was one we did last week. Which and then okay, interesting enough. So Melissa called me the other night. Yeah, and we stayed on the phone talking for two hours because we haven't actually talked to each other in a while. We just that. bullshitted for two hours, but she called me because she saw the Roe v. Wade episode. She yeah. listened to it. She liked our takes on it. She, you know what I mean? Yeah. But she was mad because she was like, you guys had a conversation about Roe v. Wade and you didn't invite any of the women of the country. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck were you thinking? I'm like, well, that's about the problem. That we weren't. We just, we just got on and started talking. And then I asked the question about, Hey, what'd you think about Roe v. Wade? And it just kind of snowballed from there. So we're wild. gonna do go ahead, go ahead. We're gonna do another episode. And it's gonna be the real spoiler country episode of Roe v. Wade. And it's gonna be just all the girls. So she wants Kaylee to be on, she wants Tafine to be on, she wants Renee and and herself, of course. And then she's gonna invite Tucky. So oh, we'll nice. see. We don't know if Tucky will, will come. If people who don't know, you can go back. Williams. Yeah, Tucky. She's 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 an awesome person. She's so cool. Yeah, and she's directed a, a couple movies, a TV show too, a TV show. Yeah, and, started uh, and directed and wrote. Yeah, one of them on Amazon. They canceled it basically, and then she was able to force them to put it back on, which was awesome. Canceled for stupid reasons. It's, like, it's nothing wrong with it. It's, I watched it. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So hopefully, we'll ask her if she'll come on. Who knows? We don't can't promise that one, yeah. but we can ask. The worst she can say is no. That'll but, be good. You know, so in a couple of weeks, we'll try to get everybody together and they'll do a panel discussion and just have like, you know, maybe no one will get a word in edgewise. Who knows with these girls? Right. You know, we'll see. what's funny is as soon as we, I finished that one editing and got it posted, I put it in the uh -huh. chat room and I was like, 
we should totally should have asked for name Melissa to join this. I, just, <laughs> I, text, I, text, I was like, if you guys want to do one too, I'll push it out right away. Just, just let me know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it was her idea to do the panel. I'm like, I think that's brilliant. Yeah. I think it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And Johnny and I will, you know, the sausage will stay away. Yeah. We can sit out or we can, I can, oh, well, sit by silently and just make sure things sound right and shit. But, well, we, or yeah, they just go on Zoom. They're fine. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. But so, beyond that, our first, well, actually, no, we are, we, we dropped our Obi Wan interview too, or Obi Wan review as well yesterday. Oh, then, the, uh, the Obi Wan. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. then our, our, our Let's Talk Comics one, which was supposed to be our Obi Wan inter or, or, uh, interview. No, I thought it was supposed to be Doctor Strange. Dr. Str one of them, one of the ones yeah. inside. Room. One of the that, reviews that comes out on on Monday, and then I have some interviews I have to drop that were done that need time crunch, which will come out next week. And then our Doctor Strange review will come out on the eleventh. Nice, and this will come out today on July second. July second. So I'll just I'll July just July second. Okay, yeah. I keep thinking it's the first, or maybe maybe the morning of July third, depending upon when we stop talking, because <laughs> it's already eleven p.m. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is 11. It got late quick. Yeah. I, uh, I always have to check the animals all day because they got, they had procedure. Yeah, the, got their <laughs> stuff taken care of. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and they're high energy. So it's like, oh, God, yeah. stop. Blue was like literally, what do they call it? Splunking. Yeah. When they, when they lay flat on their stomach. Mm -hmm. And he's in, I just cut the, I did all the lawn today, which takes me, a few hours to to do because I I had to fix my lawnmower because you use you use scissors and a and a ruler right I do I do yeah I do Disney style fun story my 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 brother in law's mom cut her lawn that way for years what she, she cut her she cut her front lawn with a ruler and a pair of scissors why because she wanted to all be one and a half inches one and a half or two inches long like that so an exact yeah, how long did it take her. It was a small, like, you know, you know, Bremerton, old, old Bremerton, like those little front lawns. No, man. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, off, yeah. Like, like off, she, off of Hewitt, right? Yeah. It was one of those small little front lawns. And so yeah. it was like, you know, what, 10 feet by 10 feet, maybe at the most. Yeah. So she would cut it with a ruler and scissors. Oh my God. That's insane. But I had, <laughs> still insane. I had to fix the yeah. lawnmower today and. It was just, you know, so it was like three hours. I was dead tired. But when I got done and the front lawn was nice and cut and everything, yeah. he went out there and he just laid flat. He just had surgery. And yeah, then he yeah. takes just his front paws and he drags himself uh. <laughs> through the thing. I'm like, what are you doing? You're going to bust a stitch, dude. Your sack's going to bust open. Stop. And I'm dude. like having to pick him up and like... <laughs> when when Reggie had his that's chopped off, yeah, we bought we bought the like little suit for him mm -hmm. to put on him. That like it looks like a little super, little Superman suit because it's blue and it's blue and red. And he he put say <laughs> Kaylee and I were gone on I think our I think it, it lined up to we were on our anniversary. Yeah, so we were gone for two th two or three days up in Woodby Island, and Sadie took care of him and she put it on him and he literally just gets in his, and stands there and just freezes and is like. It was frozen for like 30 minutes once you put it on. He just wouldn't move. And then that's uh, funny. Yeah, it was it was crazy. See the picture's like he's not moving. He's not moving. And he just started sniffing it. And then finally he was okay. He, was, he didn't care anymore. But for like 30 right. minutes, he just was frozen. Oh. Yeah, I just worry about him having to go to the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And he just needs to calm down. Yeah. You know, and they both get super excited. When I put muffin in a, a in a collar and I put the leash on her. It yeah. was the first time she's really been on a leash that I that I'm aware of. Yeah. And as I'm walking her to the grass so she can go to the bathroom before she goes in for surgery, she's like literally flipping in the air. She's like jumping in the air and flipping on the way down and trying <laughs> wee, to get out of this thing. Wee. It's like, what are you? It was like, oh come on. <laughs> Stop it. Dogs are ridiculous. Oh my god, dogs are nuts, dude. Yeah. Nuts. And I got three of them right now. They got three of them too. Yeah, it's too much. I blame it, you for having dogs, by the way. Why? Because if y'all wouldn't have gotten blue, y'all, y'all, you and Tiffany wouldn't have gotten blue and but on those walks with us, and then Katie wouldn't have been drinking wine with Tiffany and talking about dogs, I wouldn't have much dogs. Yeah, I just don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It's all your fault. <laughs> you can pay for my carpet remodel. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the thing, man. I got to I got to redo the carpet in my hallway and on my stairs. Actually, on the stairs, I think we're gonna do wood. Yeah, we're gonna we're doing wood. We 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 ripped out all the carpet on our stairs and in our hallway in our bedroom. Yeah, I gotta do that. I might do that tomorrow. They're all covered in freaking pee for thirty years of animals from the previous owners. Yeah. So we ripped it all out because it stank. Yeah. Yeah. Now we just gotta buy the wood and we're gonna we're gonna hardwood ourselves. So where do you hope in the next five years that like spoiler country would be at? I hope we get to a position where I want to do live shows. Like I want to get to the spot where we can like when you say live shows, are you talking about like like in selling person tickets, live like, shows? Yeah, like going to like the show box doing a live show in person or something, you know? <laughs> like I would love to do live recordings. I yeah. think that would be fun to sell in front of an audience to get to a spot where we can actually sell tickets to an audience and do it. Or like do live events at like Emerald City Comic Con and jet in different comic cons that we go and we book time and we do a live podcast at the at the venue, you know? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff would be I mean, it terrifies me because I, I get terrified of talking in front of people, but I also <laughs> excite because I actually when I do it, I love doing it, you know? Yeah. And I want I want to get to a spot where we can actually go do a podcast at a show and it be something people want to go see, you know, something that we want to do. Right. I want to see us publish our book. We've been talking about for two, three years now. Writers. Yep. And I want to and writer of the want, West. Yeah. And I, I, I state this now and I say this publicly forever. I don't care if we make a profit on this show ever. Right. Like I just want to have fun doing it. I want it to continue being fun. I want, them, yeah. I want the momentum to go up and us to do bigger and better things. If we make a profit from it, great. Cool. But that money is probably, probably all going to go back into making the show better and sending money out to the other people who work on the show with us. Right. Like I don't care if I make money off the show. I, I do it because I love it. Right. <laughs> so that's what I hope for, for us in the next five, 10 years. I don't see us stopping. Um, because the one of us dead <laughs> pretty much. I mean, one of us will be on our deathbed. All right, last episode. <laughs> this is my final sign off, guys. <laughs> last episode. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> and then the next episode. All right, I, re I recast Kenrick. <laughs> Hey, why, why am I the last one? Why am I the first one to die? Because you're older. <laughs> you got I eight years on me, buddy. <laughs> who, would, who would you get if you had to recast me? Who would it get, who who do you think you could be? Who do you oh, think you God. could be? <laughs> nah, nobody can replace you, man. I don't even know. It'd be a, it'd be a different direction. <laughs> it would be a different. What do you think you would do though? If we if it stopped, what do you think you would do? If it just, if if we stopped doing the show, yeah. Like say I died in a car crash. Oh, okay. If you died, yeah. I, How would you change it? I probably. I don't know if I. I don't know if I'd keep it going. Honestly. Yeah. I, it, it'd be hard because the show is so rooted in you and me. Yeah. It'd be weird to keep going with a new host. Like if I if I continued to do podcasting, which I probably would, it would be under a whole new thing. Right. I would. I would essentially do like a a memorial episode for you, and that would be that would be the last. That would be the last thing. And then <laughs> if I felt like doing more, it would be like you know, new, something new. Cause right. I don't think I could continue this show without you. Cause it's so rooted in our conversations, our banter. Sure. You know, it wouldn't be the same. Like if I replaced you with Casey, it wouldn't be the same show. Right. You know, it'd be totally right. different. So it's, it's right. like, I don't feel like either one of us could be replaced and the show continue on. It, it would be a new show, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I, I would, but don't go going. I would just change the name to the John Horsley Memorial podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In, mem in memorandum, yeah. <laughs> and P J H M P D on my shirt yes. right here. <laughs> no, I'll get a tattoo of it. <laughs> no, I don't put. I, I don't. I don't put bumper stickers on sports cars, dude. <laughs> yeah, but you're a Volkswagen minivan, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the talk. Kid. I mean, <laughs> well. Oh. I used so, to say that all the time where, you know, I don't put bumper stickers on sports, sports cars. cars. Yeah. But then I thought, yeah, but you do do custom paint jobs. <laughs> exactly. You do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did, did, did you hear Melissa talk about the guys from the Quibbly show want to come on and talk about Superman? No. They want to come on and talk about why Superman's an overrated character. Oh. So you're going to do that? Well, they want us to do it with them. You and oh. me. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. And I was like, oh, that'll be a fun one. They want to come on and talk about why my favorite character is bad. Cool. Is she, did they reach out to her a lot? She was, they did their award show again and she won an award this year. So she was on it. 
<laughs> what, what was the reward for him? I don't remember. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm pretty sure the way they do that show is anybody who's on their show gets an award in their award show to get them to come back on the show. Right. Because I mean, we won an award, and it's like, it was didn't they have like somebody from Pink Floyd on? They did. That's crazy. They had a bunch. I mean, they actually had. They actually had a bunch of musicians on the show. They were. I was like, oh my god. I wonder I how they got of it when I was on there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it was cool. They're cool. They're funny guys. So yeah, I mean, we'll probably get it scheduled out and do it. Why not? But hey, these guys. I guess if you want to come on, if you want to come on the show, come on, and talk shit about my character, my favorite character. So or one of my favorite characters. <laughs> up why next, up next? Trash talking Spider Man. What do you think they would say is why he's overrated? What's the most common thing you hear? They're probably going to say all of the cliches. He's too powerful. He can. He's he's too much of a boy scout. It's too much of this. Too much. You know, he's too all the cliches. Look at you already downgrading he, what anybody he says. <laughs> I'm downloading their cliches. If you want to, if you want to come on and talk about why Superman's overrated, give me. But real the reasons. cliches are cliches because pe- people feel that way. And if it's being felt so. over disagree. and over and over again, there's something to it. I disagree. That is, people don't feel okay. the way. I think people. I fucking hate I'm you saying that. okay for you to keep going. But when you but no, but when you go, okay, you don't <laughs> no, mean to go, you okay. mean okay. Said, okay. <laughs> no, the cliches. Okay, some people feel that way. Yes. Yeah. Some people have read the material and they feel that way. Yes. Most people who say that have not read any of the material and are saying it because people they talk to about comics say that. That's what I'm saying. The problem is most people who say Superman is cliche, Superman's a Boy Scout, don't actually read Superman. Or know anything about him besides what other people in their little thought bubble say about him, right? But that's, how do you how do you know that for how do you know that's true? Talk to him for thirty seconds, and you'll figure it out. Right? Like, tell, have them tell you anything about so Superman. the most people you've talked to just don't know Superman. I would say ninety five percent of the people who say Superman's cliche that I've talked to in person yeah. don't know the first thing about Superman and have never read more than one comic with him in it. Yeah, yeah. And it was probably a Justice League comic, and they or they've just seen him on like in the movies right maybe right and they maybe watch Justice i love League. superman movies <laughs> right. and what they'll all say is they'll all say oh superman on the justice League was great okay what is that what about mean? i mean well because because the one that they've watched and the one that they've actually consumed they enjoyed it yeah. but they don't like anything else because they've actually never watched it or read it you know right like i'm not going to go talk a bunch of shit about a character i don't know about you know i mean i may tertiary make fun of it for fun but i'm not going to actually <laughs> sit there and say like, I can't talk about any of the new, like, Spider-Man Venom characters, like, all the symbiotes they have. Right. I think it's dumb they're doing all the symbiotes, but I also haven't read any of them, so I don't, I don't really know. You right. Know? It could be amazing. It, it could be awesome. I, I don't know. Right. But a lot of people who talk shit about Superman have not read Superman, and that's, that's just, it's just, it is what it, it is, right? It bugs you, huh? It does. It, it, it should bug you. Like, it, it should bug you that people talk shit about something in our fandom. Yeah. But don't take the time to learn about it. That should bug anybody who's actually a true fan of anything. Right. Like, because they're just trolls. They're just trolling it, which is, I guess, a if you want to be a troll. It's that that is troll. 100% true. There's a lot of trolls. Yeah. I mean, I, you and I troll each other all the time for fun. But yeah. ultimately, can, ultimately, we realize it and say, yeah, we're being funny. Yeah. But. I mean, I, I gave you shit for Superman a long time ago. But I, no, I, I like Superman. I mean, I grew up with Superman. Yeah. I like watching. I like, I like the movies, I think, more. Like, I remember I read. What's the one? All Star Superman, that's pretty good. I, I, I made read that one, yeah, yeah. But I didn't like the ending. Like all of a sudden, that the sun. What was that? what was the yeah. character? The big bad ended up being a. Oh, I don't remember it's been that sun years. character. Yeah, and it was just like, wait, what? It just kind of came out of nowhere. And I'm like, can you at least build up to that character? That being the person, and they didn't do that. Yeah, so I, that was the only part. Of, but I liked it overall. The overall, was good. I really liked when he's the the Russian Superman, Red Sun. Red Sun. That was a great book. The book's way better than the movie. Yeah, the movies. The movies all right. I mean, it, it's for it, dude. It's a short movie. Yeah, it's they can only short. put so much in, and they just kind of yeah. made changes to to fit. You know, I don't think it's as bad as Batman when they did Hush. I haven't, I haven't seen that one. Oh God, they completely changed. You, you you need to watch it. I'll watch it. You need to watch <laughs> it because you you read the you read Hush. Oh yeah, yeah. You need to watch it. I watch then, it. Yeah. Yeah, just be prepared to be like, why did they do that? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, that's how I felt about it. I was it's like, always, why did you make that change? There's always Batman Ninja. Oh. 
I think, well, there was parts of that that was fun, but it was like... I actually, I actually didn't mind it. Like Overall, it, dude, it was so bad. Dennis was so funny in how much he hated it. That, that it episode just made is so great. Want to hate it with him. Dude, we have the episode we did with him on Batman Ninja is so great. Yeah. But looking back at it, and, and, if, and I've watched it again since then, I'm like, yeah, it's corny. It's stupid. Yeah, it's just super corny. But it's a lot of fun. Dude, I mean, that whole the whole <laughs> robot thing at the end with the, the houses is just too much. It's like, oh I love man. It, I love it. It's so dumb. Yeah. It's weird. So dumb. Yeah. It's like, yeah why so, can't you guys just do Batman and Fuel Japan? That'd be cool. And just keep it that. And even even use a different character. Well, it, you know can't, I mean? it, can't, it can't be Bruce Wayne. It's Fuel Japan. It should be. It should be somebody from from Japan. Well, he went like I thought they went like back in time or some shit. I, there's some time. Yeah, it's time travel. Yeah, it was like shit. they could do that whole time thing, but have it be in Fuel yeah. Japan. But I mean, oh, but I'd much rather have a Batman character that's not Bruce Wayne in Fuel Japan. Me too. Fact, that would actually be a really cool thing. Like, do a Batman in pre-Roman, pre-British Ireland. Those That'd Celtic cool. tribes, you know, that'd be cool. Or in Rome, like, oh, that would be cool. Uh, the height of Rome's power in and, Rome, and Batman shows up and do a Batman there, you know, that'd be cool. That that'd would be cool. Be cool. Be hella cool. I'm what all for. I'm all for alternate timeline stories. Anyways, I like things that alternate alternate Call dimensions DC right now. Yeah, yeah uh, idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! They answered. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying there's some cool things they could do. Yeah. What <laughs> if you had to flush away all characters, right? And I'm gonna say you can't choose, you cannot choose Superman. Okay. Okay. And you had one character that you could replace. Uh, what character would you replace Superman if Superman wasn't wasn't available? For your whole memory of looking back with your dad. With what you're the movies, the comic books you've read, the collecting, the the infatuation that you've had with Superman now. If you had a if 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 that was gone and 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 something said, hey, we can replace all those memories with a different character, what character would you choose? So I have two answers. Wait, give me one second. Okay. It's gonna be fun. I ask this person the question. Okay. All right. So, does it have to logically make sense for the timeline of my dad? <sighs> nice. Does it have to logically make sense for the timeline of my dad would have to have known who it was as he was a kid versus it being created later, later on? I don't know. I don't think it needs to. I don't think it has to be that way. But, well, if, if it replaces all the memories of my dad, then it would make it, would ha it have to logically say. Are you saying does it have to be a golden age character? Yes, because if it, w it wouldn't make sense for my dad, because it couldn't be Wolverine, because your dad was already a, a, a grown ass man by the time exactly. Wolverine came out. Let's it say that doesn't matter. If that doesn't matter, Spider Man. Really, Spider Man? Yes. Oh, interesting. If that if that does matter, Green Lantern. Yeah, it, it, it will. It would 100% be Green Lantern. Yeah. Alan Scott. <laughs> How did I know? Because <laughs> I've talked about my dad's infatuation with Green Lantern, with Green Lantern before. And I, yeah. So, it I would 100% not be Green Lantern for me. I've never really, I've never really jived. I like watching him on TV. I love Jon Stewart. Yeah. That version of Green Lantern. And I always have. I've, I've talked to you about Jon Stewart. Yeah. Since we started doing this, that that's my, if, if it's going to be one Green Lantern. I'm going to watch a John Stewart movie. I'm going to read a John Stewart book before I read anybody else's. But I don't know what the constructs are just so hokey to me. I just, I don't want to see it's It's like plastic man making shit yeah. out of his hand. I just, it just turns me off. Right. It's too, I'm already in suspended my disbelief on, for a comic book. Right. I've already yeah, yeah. done this. And now you've just, t it's, it's Looney Tunes. But when they start doing that <laughs> kind of stuff to me and I can't, yeah, I guess for me, man, who would it be? Who are you? Who are you removing? Are you removing Superman? I'd have to remove Spider Man or Magic. Yeah. So if I just, I'll just say remove those two. Part of me wants to say Wolverine, but I, Wolverine's just nostalgic. But who would it be? Man, Captain, I can't. Captain Planet. Yeah, <laughs> Captain he's a hero. Planet. He's going to bring a potion to zero. If you get your wall, 
Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Maybe there's something on the wall. I, I, I guess it would be Conan. That's a good one. That would be yeah. Conan would be the top would be a top five replacer for me because there's a lot of and it's mostly because there's a lot of history in my family with Conan. Because I don't know if you know this, but right back there, right, <laughs> right see, <back> there. <laughs> in this row of books, right about here, I think it is, is yeah. all of the Frank Vizetta Conan cover first printings. Oh, what? How did you so get you, those? You want to see them? Uh, does a bear shit in the woods? No, they use toilets. No, they, no, they don't. Dude, you're going bald like me. Can't hear you yet. <laughs> oh. I uh, said you're going here. bald like me. <laughs> I am. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, I'm I'm worse than you are. You're just you're just starting to catch up. <laughs> but yeah, so like these old Conan books. Oh yeah, that's cool. A lot of those are savage sort of Conan, aren't they? No, these these are the novels. Yeah, I know, but I think they reprinted those on like the savage sort of Conan, didn't they? Oh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Adventure. those are cool. Could were those your dad's? Over. Yeah. My dad bought these new off the shelves when they came out. Oh, man. I don't want those. No. <laughs> no I don't need yours. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> no. You can't have mine. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get better copies. <laughs> hey, these are perfectly fine for me. These are the ones, ones my dad read, so I'm good. Yeah, that's cool. Perfect. How did, did he love those books? Oh, dude, he loved them. He was, he, Frazetta was, his, was one of his favorite artists, so he bought any book that had a Frazetta cover on it. Yeah. And he loved Conan, but I was a huge Conan fan. I love Conan. Yeah. Robert E. Howard was a crazy guy, though. Most writers are. Yeah, but he actually, I think he committed suicide. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. As we go to the tape. Go to the tape. I told you that that movie, did you ever watch that movie I told you about with Vincent watch. D'Onofrio playing Robert E. Howard? I don't think I did. Let's see, Robert E. 1936, let's see. Yeah, he was, he was only like 30 years old when he died. That's crazy. Yeah, he had, he had, he had a, like, mental health. Yeah, he shot himself. Yeah. That's sad it is it's always sad you know he was he was 30 he was 30 years old yeah he was young damn yeah he was really young and he came up with some some amazing stuff that has stuck with us and will be retold well after we're gone yeah conan solomon kane i mean solomon kane was cool did you ever see that movie no they did a solomon kane movie that was actually pretty good it was low budget but it was really good I mean, that's wrong, that's wrong with low budget. No, not, but no, this, the storytelling was good. I mean, it had Pete Postaway in it. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. And this is like right before he died. Nice. Well, yeah. not unless he died, but nice he's in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, anything with Pete Postaway in it is going to be, it's going to be, you got to give it a chance because yeah. it's probably going to be pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. And nice. it was, it was fun. But yeah, Robert Howard, great. I would love to get those. Those, those, uh, I mean, dude, Conan's, they're cool. some, just to try to find some of those original Conan books. Yeah. Oh, actually, they're, I think they're in Weird Tales. Yeah. They're in Weird Tales, the old Weird Tales books. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get some of those old Weird Tales because they had him and Tarzan was in them too. Yeah. HP Lovecraft. Yeah. It was in them too. Yeah. Cthulhu. Yeah. I mean, that'd just be, could you imagine? Those are the books. Like, if you go back in time, it, I, a lot of people are like, oh, I'd get Action Comics number one. I'd get, well, they always say Superman number one. But they mean action comics number one. And he gets yeah. Spider Man, you know what I mean? When they talk about comic books, I'm going for those. Yeah. I'm going for those weird tales because they're rare. They're rare. You know what I mean? I'm going, I'm going to go to like an old bookstore and I'm going to find like, you know, Alice in Wonderland, like first printings from, you know, I'm going to go back and get a first printing of Frankenstein. Yeah. You know, that's what you got to do. Those are, those, those are wealth building books. <laughs> Dude, when I was, when I, so we had a, the same, I told you on one of the episodes that they'll come out in the future. Yeah. The Comic Con 04, we went to my buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Bought some money, whatever. We paid him back and we paid it. We sold the Van Perla books, right? On that same trip, we had found at Goodwill for a dollar 
a first printing of the yearling. What? Signed. Wh- like really signed? Yes. And we took it with us and we sold it to a rare book dealer down there for a god awful amount of money. Yeah. And we were talking to them about um, their other, you know, other books they had signed and they pulled out a first edition Frankenstein signed by Mary Shelley. Yes. Wow. And I'll sign, those who don't know, signed books that in that day were rare. It happened. Yeah. But mostly what was ha- mostly what would happen with signed books in that era is the author would be like writing a check and they would just sign their name in the front of the book real quick to make sure their pen worked. Yeah. Be, or oh, they were oh. sending that book to a friend of theirs. Yeah. And they would yeah. write a small note to that person. Yep. Yep. And it was crazy. And this person had like a bunch of really rare books. It's pretty sad they had that. They had, I mean. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Book dealing uh, is crazy, and it's hard because it's so easy for people to fake it. Yeah. And then you got to know the right people. And I would love to know more about book collecting, like Hmm. rare old books. Like, you know what I mean? What books are the right ones to get? All that kind of stuff. I have. uh, So, Richard Kipling's vampire book, vampire poem book, I'm sorry. Yeah. From I have somewhere in here, I think it's... I don't know. It may not be here, but I have, I found it good. Well, one time it's like this big, this thick, you know, like normal book size, but it's in a little, it's in a little like box. Yeah. And it's a first printing of his vampire poems. Oh, crazy. And I bought it and I kept, kept it. it. And it's actually, you actually didn't get, I read it. It's, it's really good, but it's a rendered Kipling vam, I, it's vampire. It's something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but it's really cool. I used to go to like, Goodwill all the time and find like old books that looked interesting yeah. and then yeah. buy them and, and try and read them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Goodwill. Yeah, that's the thing with books. Like, more people don't know what they have, mm-hmm. you know, than oh, yeah, that know. So, but you can't go like half price books, but half price, every good dude. I've gone to half price books looking at some of their comic books, and it's kind of crazy because they will try to charge for like a five dollar book and they'll try to charge like 70 bucks. Oh, I know 80 bucks, and they'll have it behind the glass. But then okay. I pulled out that NX, is it NYX? NYX. I pulled out number two and number three. Yeah. And I bought them for 25 cents a piece. Yeah. They just don't know what they have. And it's like a, I mean, they're not like expensive. You know what I mean? But they're not cheap either. They're like $10, $15 books. Wait, are you talking about the first, the first X23? Yeah. The first X23 is a thousand dollar book. Well, no, not the first, not, not her first appearance. Is that number two? That's number three. Oh, okay. So it was like, I don't, I, it was, it was an old, it was, it was around there. And one and I mean, yeah, one and two are about about that much about worth that much or so. But X yeah, it wasn't think, that it wasn't those ones. It wasn't her I think first. It's, yeah, NYX number three is the first appearance. One and two are worth about like a little Maybe bit. It was but, number five and number six, or something like that. They're like yeah. 10, 15 dollars books. Yeah, yeah, I looked yeah. it up. Yeah. And I got them for 25 cents. I was gonna say if you got number three for 25 cents, holy crap. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. But it was just weird. And then they had yeah. like this old like like team. It was like the thing and something else. Like, Marvel team up. Like Marvel team up. Yeah. But it was like a three dollar book, a four dollar seventy book. bucks for yeah. They want bucks. seventy bucks, and it's behind the glass and everything. And that's not like, ha- that's not half price, guys. Yeah, it's just weird, yeah. uh, you know. And then they had some old books, and I'm like, they had some books that were like from the 1890s, you know, and they wanted yeah. like two hundred dollars, and they're up on a shelf. This is the one in Redmond. Yeah, and then when I was looking at it, I was just like, I, you know, and I always look it up and see what it is on eBay, and then I go to I filter by sold. Yep. Same. You know, and they're like, they were like these mass produced books that are all over the place. It's yeah. like, I just don't get it. I don't some get people, it. I don't get how they, they, they figure out what to, to do. Some people just see old and put a high price on it, hoping somebody will take it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know your dad was a big Conan fan. Oh, yeah. He loved Conan. That's cool. He loved, it. He loved the movies too. So <laughs> the movies are great. That first one is so good. Yeah. I like, I like, I like them too. They're, they're great. I, I, I even liked the, uh, what's his name? Momoa's. I never saw that one. Oh, it's terrible, but I love yeah. it. I mean, it's a Conan movie. Yeah. But you know, and it to... is a Conan movie. That's the thing. I think people, I don't know what people were thinking. I mean, it's a fucking Conan movie. I still remember being at your house, hanging out with you that one, like for two or three times, you were just, you were just playing Conan on the Xbox. <laughs> I loved that game. That yeah. was a fun game. Now they I have actually, some new Conan game. I actually I bought played. that game because of you, because I was sitting there watching you play it. I went oh, really? It. I went and bought it. Yeah. <laughs> You're I never beat it, but it was fun. Yeah, I don't know if I ever beat it either. 
I don't know. It was a cool game, though. Do you know Robert Patrick's nickname? <laughs> Ray. And then the other one was Two Gun Bob. That's kind of Two random. Bob. There's got to be a story behind that. That's kind of random. How'd you get, how'd you get to Robert Patrick? Not Robert Patrick. Robert E. Howard. Okay. Because I'm looking at his <laughs> Wikipedia page. Though. That makes more sense of, our, of it being not Robert Patrick. Like how I know we're talking about Conan, and Conan had Arnold Schwarzenegger. And they were and they were both him and Robert Patrick were both in T2. That's kind of a leap for your mind to go from Conan <laughs> to Robert Patrick, but I guess I can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, I it's should have started the, today's episode saying Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday! Happy Birthday! <laughs> Do you, do you still watch the Frosty the Snowman? No, I hate that movie. Even with your kids? Yeah, it's so dumb. It's so slow. It's slow. It is kind of slow. I used to love it when I was. A I kid. mean, my kids. Don't, I mean, we watch. I mean, watch it sometimes, but we put it on. Like the kids get bored. It's not great. I don't. I, I think the kids to nowadays are much more sophisticated in what they're going yeah. to pay attention to. But I didn't right. see. I didn't like those movies as a kid either. Like I didn't like Frosty or Rudolph or. or you didn't like Rudolph movies. the Red Nosed Reindeer when you were a kid? No, I thought I, it was. It looked hokey and it was. It's slow. Looked hokey. It. What? It's hokey. <laughs> no, it's hokey. that is Ralph Bakshi stop animation. I mean, that was that is amazing. The amount of work that went into that thing. No, I dude, I it's totally crazy. Cried to the nuts. craft. You're no, fucking no, no. nuts. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Credit to the craft. I just didn't care for it. Not my thing. Yeah. I'm allowed to not like, like something. Five, six years old? Well, I don't remember when I was five, six years old. Wait, I don't, yeah, remember. don't remember nothing from five, six years old. I don't, no, I don't remember nothing. I don't remember watching that movie. I don't remember actually seeing that movie. I actually don't remember ever actually watching it as a kid. I just remember knowing what it was. Oh, you see, know? that's that. See, that's the thing. See, for me, Channel 7, CBS, every year, I could not wait. And when I saw the the commercials, I'm like, me. I knew when it was going to be on. I was like six, seven years old. And boom, man, I had to watch it. Yeah, that was not and me. I remember watching all of them. All the ones that like, you know what I mean? I the have the box of DVDs. Yeah, but I think if you saw it when you're, if I would have saw those when I was a teenager, I'd be in your camp, right? I'd be like, yeah. this is dumb. But the fact that I saw it and, you know, it's like, oh, I, I just remember waiting and waiting and waiting to watch those. And then. And same with Frosty and Charlie Brown and all of that. I just couldn't wait for him to come on every year. And that's the one of the things, too, is like now it's just like push button. You're watching it. Yeah. You know, there's no. No waiting. Yeah. There's no anticipation. Yeah. You know. Oh, did you watch, did you watch Stranger Things? I haven't watched the one that just came out. I'm waiting okay. for the girls to come home. Okay. Have you watched Umbrella Academy? I like no. You asked me this before, right. and I watched the first season. I, I liked it. I started watching the second season. I liked it, but for some reason, I stopped. I don't even know why. I just stopped watching it, like halfway through. Yeah, and I think it just didn't hold my attention. You know, but I know the third season's out. It's pretty good too. Is it good? I should yeah, check I like it out. I should yeah. go back and rewatch it, and and then go check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. watching. I I, I watched. Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Have you watched that? It is on my list to watch. I have oh, not watched so it yet. Good. They did such a great job on it. Oh, I'm sure. They really did. And now I'm watching. I watched Discovery. I like Discovery. I watched the first ep the first season. And I think half of the second season. And now I'm going back. Because it's been long enough now that I don't remember. So I'm going back and rewatching. Season one is good. Yeah. Yeah. I like season two is good as well. I haven't, and I'm, I haven't started season three yet of Discovery. What movie are you excited for this year? Is there anyone coming out that you're like? Oh, I, I don't even I don't even know what's coming out. I have paid no attention to movies that are coming out at all yeah. anymore. I don't even know. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I kind of like that. I'm the same but, way right now. I kind of yeah, like it. Like, I kind of like it too. I have no yeah, anxiety was, of waiting for something. I'm I'm not, I'm not anticipating anything. I just like. I go yeah, look if I up, happen to catch a trailer, then I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. But I try. And, I guess but Thor, the thing is, you know what Thor. turned me off. Is yeah. all the fake trailers? Oh, I hate the fake trailers. It's turned me off. I don't want to. I don't. I'm like. I don't know if this is real. I don't. I don't want to yeah. watch this anymore. Yeah, I guess Thor. I'm looking forward to. Thor. Yeah, he's this is his last role. Thor four. You know, female Thor. Chris Hemsworth. His last. Well, I mean, he's Jane Foster's taken over. So. Yeah, but she only had it for a little while, and it's already back to it's already back to normal Thor. 
Well, was, she had it for a couple of years in the comics, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. But a couple of years in the comics is like well, you say like, you say like she had the comics for like three issues and went back to Thor. No, it's like, yeah, well, that's it what it feels like to me because it's, it's not very long because it's like that's only like thirty episodes or thirty issues. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's just I don't know. That's the one thing, dude. That's my one pet peeve with comic writing is there are sometimes there are leaps in the story where you're like, what just happened? Yeah. How did you get from here to here? There's no explanation, you know what I mean? Or there's no. <laughs> it it can it kills me sometimes when when like well, no plot like plot development. To me, I'd rather have a story drag out. I mean, especially when it, especially it's written form. Yeah, you have time. Yeah, you have time, and it's like oh, it drives me nuts. And then when it's like they make, you know, and you can always tell when they're rushing. You know, yeah. which sucks because that's the thing. That's the cool. That's the cool thing about independent books right now, and like things like Image is because the writer and the illustrator can take their time in telling their story. Whereas yeah. Marvel and DC, it's a fucking rush job, and that it's drives a, me nuts sometimes. It's an IP mill. Yeah, I think Guardians Three is his last Thor because he's supposed to be in Guardians Three as well. Oh, it's Guardian Three. Oh, yeah. So Guardians Three is after. Yeah, if he's done with Thor, is it after be... though in the timeline? That's the only thing. Sometimes I don't know what as a timeline, but I just know that Thor comes out this month, and Guardians Three. Come... Oh, the Guardians Three. Sorry, the Guardians Christmas special comes out this year, and then Guardians Three comes out next year. Right. Well, they had to like restart or like pause. It wasn't there. There's was a lot of a lot of delays. Calls, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For Guardians Three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I am excited for the guard. I, I guess I am excited for Guardians Three when it finally comes out. That's the the Christmas special one. Is I'm I'm actually really excited for. It's on Disney Plus only though. So yeah, well that's okay. <laughs> I have Disney Plus. Yeah, I have that too. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if you have AT and T, you have Disney Plus for free. Or no, you have HBO for free. HBO Max for free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends on what level. Disney Plus is free. I think with with Verizon or something like that. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, well, dude, I think that wraps up for birthday, a five year. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday. Where's my fucking yeah. cake? Oh, thank you. Blake Here's your well. cake. It's a wow. rock star. Oh. Not sponsored. Push it forward. Here you go. Oh, oh, see, you messed it up. <laughs> no, that was seamless. That was perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it perfect changed. Editing. It did. It morphed into whatever the hell that is. <laughs> All right, man. All right, guys. If you made it this far, yeah, just there's really a lot mean. of babbling on this episode <laughs> and a lot of things that were probably... There always is. Yeah. Close and means more to, to uh, him and I than everybody out there. But who knows? You know, maybe yeah. you loved it. Thanks for sticking around. We appreciated yeah. it. We here's, really the five, here's the five more years. See you yeah. in 10. Here's five more years. Yeah. That means we're 140 episodes away from 1,000. Yeah, dude. And that one will be, a, we'll we'll try to do something super special for that one. Yeah. Well, we'll All right. That, Kevin Smith, I don't know. Don't forget, subscribe, hit the little bell, or is it that way? I don't know, one of the directions. Either that way or that way. Wherever the bell is, hit that sucker, and we'll chat to you soon. Spooky! And we're back. That's right. We are back. Back in the saddle again. Well, <laughs> I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that as much as we did making it for you. And if you like what you heard and you want to hear more, you got to go check out spoilerverse.com because at spoilerverse.com, we have a plethora of amazing directors and artists of all walks of life and editors and writers and Oh my God! Are you a lover of comic books like we are? Then so there's many. so many amazing people from the comic book world over at spoilerverse.com, and I highly implore you to go there and check it out. Yeah, and while you're there, you can check out all the other podcasts on our network, like Bridges and Geekdoms, and Funny Book Forensics, and Haphazard Adventures, and Nerds from the Crypt, and so many more. Misery Point episodes Radio. all the time. Go check all of them out, and check out all of the reviews and previews and articles we have going up every single day for you, every day on spoilerverse.com for you to check out, and to read, and to love, and to like, and to comment. We have a store link. If you want to help support the site, you can do it two ways. One, go to our Patreon, which is at patreon.com slash spoiler country. 
or go to our store link in the middle of the site there and get a t-shirt, a face mask, a hoodie, something. Look fly as hell and help support the site when you do that because we get a dollar or two. And, you know, maybe you want to talk to us. If you do, you can do it obviously on all the socials. But if you go to scpod.us slash discord, you can join our public discord server and come chat with us all day long. I couldn't say it better myself, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You just mouthed out a ton of information at once. And really, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy what you're hearing because we're, we're working our butts off to bring it to you. We are. We are. I guess there's only one left thing. One left thing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. There's only one left thing left to do. What's that? In an oceans of podcasts, we are Cthulhu. As Cthulhu compels you to Spaghetti. do Open the mind and read more. Now, bitch. Recording in progress. Right, right. <laughs> I need to figure out a better way to do my headphone cable because it always fucking hurts or pulls into my ears. Yeah, it, it would be nice that because you have your signal coming into your microphone to your computer that and that your computer couldn't be smart enough to know that the sound that it's generating cancels out automatically coming into back into the microphone because right. then you wouldn't even have to wear headphones i know but then it's just an overlay it's, it, it, okay, right now it'll just be a, a feedback loop i mean that's what i'm saying though yeah it'd be it'd nice, nice if the computer is smart enough to cancel out right sound coming out of it cancels the microphone's coming into it. Yeah, but it's not smart enough. <laughs> right. Have you, before we get going, going, have you seen what Porsche is working on? No. They're working on this biofuel to replace its synthetic gasoline that has zero emissions and can oh, be nice. ran in your car today. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then what it does also, it has like this thing and it captures carbon dioxide in the air. So as you're driving along, you gain fuel from wind, the carbon dioxide in the air, which gets converted into fuel, and all processes back in. That'd be awesome to have. Me real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of crazy. I, there's yeah. a, a, I'll send you the article. It's on Car and Driver. Yeah, if the gas companies ever let it come out. <laughs> well, they're not going to have a choice, right? Well, they're working with gas companies on this, too. Are they? Well, they, I mean, they're not going to have a choice. What are they going to do? They've stopped shit like that before. Yeah. They, buy well, the, they buy the Yeah, but they don't, they've never company. had a, a company like Tesla and car companies actively moving away and creating electrical vehicles, right? Yeah. And it just sucks it's taking this long. Yeah. Well, it's kind of crazy. It's, it's kind of crazy. crazy. It makes it's you cool. want to wait on getting anything. Right. Because so. it's like, do you get electric? But it could be like a big boondoggle and nothing happens. Like Toyota has one electric vehicle and they just recalled every single one of them. Why did that? Why? And there's something wrong with the software, but none of them were actually sold yet. They were shipped uh, to different places, but none of them were actually sold yet. That's probably good. And well, and Toyota is like saying, well, they're not 100% confident that electric vehicles is the way to go. You know, they yeah. have a hydro, they have a, a, what do you call it? Jesus Christ. It's, it's the most common. It's the most common element in, in the universe. Carbon? Hydrogen. They have hydrogen. a hydrogen car. They have a hydrogen car. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. You can buy it. You just, you can buy it now. You just, the only state that really has a hydrogen fuel facility is California. Oh, okay. But it gets like the same as electricity and stuff. And it's zero emissions. It That's produces water. Uh, I mean, hydrogen. Yeah, actual H2O. <laughs> it's drinking water. Yeah, You have to go in and do an electrolysis, so they have to electrify the water. Yeah. And then they can pour it in. It's kind of crazy, you know? I'm really hoping... I'm I'm interested in the synthetic fuel, though. It's yeah, that sounds cool, because it doesn't obsolete cars. Yeah. Yeah, are you looking at it? No. Oh. I'm think I'm doing something else, but I'm waiting for it to start. But yeah, no, yeah, that's one of the things that Porsche said. They're like, or Porsche, however you want to say it. They're like, look, we're gonna we're gonna commit to to electric vehicles. We said we were gonna do that, but we don't want to strand, you know, not strand, not keep somebody stranded. 
like the yeah. people that have bought our cars in the past. Right. Not strand them on an island, you know? Because it would. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're coming up with this. And then if, they, if it works. If it works, it'd be awesome. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Kind of super crazy. I don't understand. I mean, I would imagine people have been working on fuels for a long time. They have. I mean, there's synthetic kind of, fuels. Yeah. Water-based fuels, hydrogen fuels like that. Well, in the 1920s and then in the 1919s, you had steam-powered cars, you had electric cars, and you had gas-powered cars. Yeah. It's kind of went out <laughs> yeah basically gas basically went out well steam just couldn't get fast enough and electric just didn't go far enough it was there was no technology for it yet yeah it's funny it was ford and edison that worked on one of the first ones not surprising an electric car so all right what are we going to talk about i don't know it's just five years today so if we would just do something this could be, this could be short thing you just put out about right. five years we could reminisce 